So what will San Jose look like under the Mahan administration? Only one person can really answer that. Joining us now live, the next mayor of San Jose, Matt Mahan. Matt, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I, I, I know there are people who salute anyone willing to tackle taking on a major city. Uh, these days, you will be dealing with things ranging from uh, tech layoffs and crime and homelessness, uh, pedestrian deaths. I know you're going to say you'll jump in and start working on all of that. But seriously, what what do you tackle first? Yeah, thank you. You know, it was a great campaign. I just want to acknowledge Supervisor Chavez. Appreciated getting her call today and, and appreciate her years of public service and look forward to working with her to uh, bring forward solutions. You know, I, I really ran on the concept of focus, really focusing in on core services. We've seen the growth of local government. We're heading into what is likely to be a very tough economic patch regionally, nationally, and, and I, I think it's important that we get back to basics of proper police staffing, addressing homelessness in more cost-effective ways and getting at root causes, including mental health and addiction treatment, and speeding up pro processing of permits so that we can build more housing and, and better support our local economy. So I want to focus in on those core services. Of course, you and your opponent have very different views on how to tackle all of those issues, or a number of them at least, and many members of the council actually supported uh, Cindy Chavez in this race, and not you, even though you shared the council with them. Um, she had a lot of the progressives and the unions, how are you anticipating that you'll be forming some kind of coalition or how do you plan to work with those groups which did not support you? Well, you know, I'm actually, I'm a collaborator by nature. I'm very confident we're going to be able to work together. It was no surprise to me that most of the local electeds endorsed my opponent. She's been in local office for 20 years and had a 20 point head start when I jumped into the race. So I didn't expect a lot of establishment support to be perfectly honest with you. I think what's important now is to listen to what the voters had to say. I think our message of focus and accountability for results, including my proposal that we tie elected officials pay raises to measurable performance really resonated. But beyond that, I, you know, I don't pretend to have all of the answers. I, I think, you know, I, I have the, the solutions I've put forth. I want to listen to and learn from my colleagues. And what, what I really hope is that if we're better about measuring our performance, we will reject the approaches that aren't working faster, well, even if they're my approaches, and we'll come up with better ones. So it's, it's really about being, being more accountable for the outcomes. Matt, I'm kind of going to stay on the same page. You've got the mayor's endorsement, the outgoing mayor, Sam Licardo, uh, two former San Jose mayors who did the job, uh, Chuck Reed, uh, Tom McHenry. What, if anything, did that signify to you? Well, I was grateful to have their backing and, and to have the endorsement of the Mercury News. I, I sat down with each of them, walked them through my understanding of the city's challenges and the unique role of the mayor and asked for their support. And I was very lucky to receive it. And those are the folks who know what it takes to do the job. But at the end of the day, th this campaign for me was never about endorsements. We signed up over 40,000 residents who wanted change and common sense solutions. We hosted over 350 meeting greets in backyards and living rooms and small businesses across the city. And that was really our secret sauce. We went out to the neighborhoods every single day and talked to people about what isn't working and what we can do differently to be more accountable for results. And I think that's what resonated. Uh, let's talk about a couple specifics. A lot of layoffs in the tech industry certainly will affect the re San Jose, the entire region, but certainly San Jose in particular. How do you uh, suggest or how do you feel that's going to impact your now leadership, you're going to have a lot of people who are looking for work and less income, less income tax coming into the area. You're right about that. We, 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 there's no doubt we, we face economic headwinds. And you know, I, I think the, the most important thing we can do as a starting place is, is become more efficient and innovative in government so that we do more with less. That w I don't think we are likely in the next few election cycles to be in a position to go to the voters and ask them for a new tax or a new bond to solve our problems. Quite to the contrary, we're going to have to take the dollars we already have and use them more effectively. That's why I ran against the idea of solving homelessness by building brand new apartments at nearly $1 million a door. There are much more cost effective ways to get people inside. And so I think it's going to force us to be more innovative. As for the broader economy, we live in a place with the most talented workforce in the world and downturns are also opportunities. I think we're going to see a bunch of 
great new companies emerge out of this downturn in the years ahead, and, and I'm confident that we're going to bounce back. And Matt, let's stay on homelessness for a moment. You've made it clear all along that uh, you believe in helping the homeless. Uh, they should not be on the streets if they suffer from severe mental illness or addiction. They should be in treatment centers. Is San Jose ready for that kind of demand on treatment centers? Well, that's going to require us to collaborate very closely with the county. And again, I look forward to working with Supervisor Chavez. It was, a, it was a spirited campaign, but she's over at the county with her colleagues. And as you no doubt know, our counties are responsible for health and human services. And so I'm going to continue to work with all of our supervisors to prioritize inpatient placement for addiction and mental illness. I really appreciate the governor's leadership with his care court proposal. I fully support that and want to work with our county to implement those courts as quickly as possible and make sure we have a good collaboration with our law enforcement officers on the city side. So in talking about public safety, law enforcement, as you know, and working with the county, uh, the county sheriff, Lori Smith, just stepped down uh, under um, difficult circumstances. Uh, San Jose, like most of the major cities in the Bay Area, dealing with sideshows and increases in crime. Uh, where do you stand on the public safety issues and increasing the number, the calls to increase the number of officers on the force in San Jose? Well, this was an area where my opponent and I actually agreed wholeheartedly. We absolutely need to increase staffing levels. Part of that has to do with, with growing our tax base. We, we, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. We're going to have to grow our local economy, support small businesses, and then make sure we prioritize that, that new revenue as it comes in for core services like police staffing. But we also need better policies. The, the data is very clear. Our police officers spend an inordinate amount of time responding to encampments and arresting the same individuals repeatedly, whether or not they live in encampments, just individuals who are deeply troubled, often with severe addiction uh, challenges. And w those folks need intervention that helps them get on their own, back on their own two feet. And, and we can do a better job of that. But again, we need accountability across local government to make sure we're intervening properly and, and empowering people to turn their lives around. Matt, you talked a lot about restructuring uh, City Hall for the average San Jose resident. What does that mean? The starting place for me is something that is so obvious our residents will probably be surprised to learn that we don't do it. But when we pass our multi-billion dollar budget, I believe that at a minimum, we should have to prioritize our top goals, rank them, baseline where we are today, publish a, an improvement target on the city website that's easy for anyone to see and understand, be specific about which dollars are going to that priority, what are the programs and policies that we've prioritized for addressing those issues. I think we should have basic dashboards that anyone can understand, including my four-year-old daughter that shows whether or not we're moving closer to the goal or not, and just increase that level of transparency and public scrutiny so that at the end of the day, people aren't electing us based on how much money we raise or which endorsements we have, but on our ability to lead the city toward measurable improvements. San Jose's new mayor, Mayor-elect Matt Mahan, congratulations and good luck on accomplishing the goals that you're setting out for the largest city in the Bay Area. Thank you for being Thank with us. Thank you so us. much. Mm -hmm.